Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar on DigiFed, which is a new innovation action supported by the Horizon 2020 program to drive the digital revolution across European SMEs. So my name is Alex. I am an innovation business developer at Bloomorpho. Bloomorpho is a member of the consortium on this project, and we are going to be an innovation management partner. I am very pleased to welcome you to the third webinar of our webinar series, where we will talk about the second part of our technical partners offer. We will start this webinar by reviewing quickly the description of the project and the application process that our coordination team explained in detail in our first webinar. If you didn't get the chance to attend, the video and the slides of our two previous webinars are available on the TGFED website in the section webinar. In the second part of our webinar, we will first welcome Alex Gluhack from Digital Catapult. Then we will welcome Marcello Coppola from ST Microelectronics, Jure Triller from University of Ljubljana, Jesus Miguel Juan Lopez from Ikerman, and finally, Andres Pop from the University of Budapest. So before we start, I would like to remind you that this webinar is animated today by Bloomorpho and that the slides and the recording of this webinar will be made available for you on the TGFED website. Also, there is a question box in the webinar's toolbox on the site, so please feel free to enter all your questions as we are going through with this webinar. We will address them to our speakers during our Q&A session at the very end of this webinar. So before we start with a quick reminder of the project, we would like to know a bit more about the audience. So this is why you will now see popping up on your screen a question right now. So um, you can choose the option that fits your company the most. So what type of organization do you work for? Do you work for a large company, a mid-cap, a SME or a startup? or an association, cluster, or RTO? I'll give you a few seconds to answer the question. All right, I will now close this poll. So, about DigiFed. So, DigiFed is an EU funded innovation action on the Horizon 2020 program, and it's dedicated to drive innovation across all European SMEs via the large scale adoption of cyber physical systems. It gathers 12 partners from nine European countries. It will last for three years and will make 3.9 million euros available as direct support to SMEs. So, what is a DigiFed offer? It's to have application experiments, projects that will go through a selection process to be able to get 55,000 euros to carry out digital products. DigiFed will bring technical expertise by CPS major experts and innovation management expertise as well. There will be two types of application experiments. The first one is the single application experiment where one company partners up with a technical partner from DigiFed. Um, it's from DigiFed partners. The company has the idea of an innovation and it has a clear market vision, but it needs technical support and the company can get up to 55,000 euros. Then we will have the twin application experiments, or in that case, two companies partner up to apply on this kind of project. Um, the company one has the idea of an innovation and a clear market vision, but it needs technical support that is provided by the company two. In that case, they can get uh, two times 55,000 euros, so that's 110,000 euros in total. So 40 projects will be funded throughout the three years duration of the project. There will be three calls and the very first one started on the 17th of March and will close 12 weeks later on the 9th of June at 5 p.m. What will happen next is that this open call that I already said started on the 17th of March, will close on the 9th of June at 5 p.m. 
After that, there will be an evaluation committee in July before the selection is confirmed by the European Commission. All companies will receive the notification of selection on the 4th and 5th of August in order to be able to sign the agreement contract and launch the project in September. How to apply on this project? Well, all the information will be made available on the website at the address that you can see on the presentation and that has been sent to you in the chat box. Again, I remind you that the slides will be made available soon on the website on the webinar section. So before the 9th of June, you will need to first register on the website, then submit two proposals, one written in English, about 10 pages that will describe the technical aspects of the experiment, and the other proposal is more business oriented and it's a video of a recorded pitch and it's five minutes oral presentation in English. You will be provided with guidelines to apply to this project through webinars and bootcamps. However, the bootcamps were supposed to be face-to-face uh, -face meetings and with the current situation with the virus, uh, we, need, we might need to change and uh, we might need to do them online but we will obviously let you know once we know for sure about it. So now, are you eligible to apply on this project? First of all, uh, you need to submit your proposal on time. Then you need to make sure that it's a cross-border proposal because you won't be able to access the funding if you partner up with a company or a research organization from your own country. Then regarding the company profile, you need to be a startup, an SME or a mid cap. You need to have the required resources to be able to implement the project. You also will need to agree to sign the contracts that will be drafted and made available for the selected companies before September. And finally, you need to be from an EU member country or an EU associated country. The list of eligible countries are available on the website you see on the presentation. So lastly, and before we start with our technical partners presentation, what will be the funding? So it can cover up to 70% of your cost. It will be a maximum of 55,000 euros per company per project, meaning that a company can be on several projects, but will be able to get a maximum of 100,000 euros on this innovation action. Also, there will be a maximum of 100,000 euros in total. If you already received funds from another action, on the SAE initiative or the I4MS initiative. All right, so that's it for the DigiFed presentation. I will now give the floor to Alex Gluha from Digital Catapult. Alex, the floor is yours. Alex? Um, uh, sorry, I realized I was muted. Okay, so I didn't want to disturb you. So, hello everyone. Uh, uh, first of all, my name is Alex Gluhak. I work for the Digital Catapult, which is like a UK innovation technology center. We are a partner of DigiFed and we, apart from providing expertise and also uh, um, our sort of time to, uh, to support the experiments, we also provide a set of facilities and offerings that uh, could be taken up by interested proposers um, to further develop their IoT, CPS products and services. Uh, the Digital Catapult has two offerings. Uh, the first one is the Future Networks Lab, which is a facility that is located uh, in London uh, and has also extensions to other parts uh, in the UK. So uh, what is it? It is basically a, uh, for us a collaborative space where we provide access to uh, let's say state-of-the-art IoT connectivity test beds, but also test networks uh, across the UK that can be used to then uh, prototype and pilot specific IoT CPS solutions. But also at the same time, um, we provide also a set of measurement capabilities that could be used for, let's say, benchmarking a product or solution or identifying improvements of how those could be, um, you know, made uh, better. Um, just to kind of give you uh, an understanding of what sort of technologies we offer as part of this uh, lab. So we've got access to 
all sorts of LP1 technologies, so low power one, like LoRaWAN, Sigfox, Narrowband, IoT, LTEM, as well as 5G. It's all under one roof. Uh, we also have access to a larger LoRaWAN testbed, which is deployed in London, but also in other parts of the UK, such as Northern Ireland uh, and Sunderland area, uh, so the Northeast. Uh, and we also have basically a 5G test network that is operational in Brighton uh, that can be used as well uh, for uh, uh, companies who are interested in experimenting with this emerging new technologies. And uh, obviously, as part of that, we provide also access and expertise equipment for like, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a performance benchmarking in terms of, let's see, evaluating energy consumption uh, and also the evaluating network protocols, how effectively they operate. Um, it's an interesting space because uh, as part of the space, we don't only have um, the sort of networks and the capabilities, but we also have uh, a sort of set of partnerships in place with some leading vendors, uh, which is, for instance, BT, PTC, IBM, ServiceNow, Semtech, Texas Instruments, for example. I think Aero is one of our recent um, new additions and Sony. So these are like partners who basically operate in the IoT space and uh, potentially those partnerships could be also leveraged or brought into kind of some conversations uh, uh, that we have in terms of like maybe pilot or exploitation phase of this project. And uh, so how can you use this lab? It's really like to kind of, uh, you know, understand how well your sort of product solution offers also with respect to other solutions on the market. Uh, identify how you can improve your product, uh, maybe in terms of energy consumption, maybe in terms of performance. Uh, uh, and also uh, we're looking at um, uh, the ability obviously to sort of test and pilot uh, on, on those uh, network infrastructures. Okay, so that's the first offering. Um, uh, Alice, could you switch to the next slide, please? Okay. So the other offering really looks more at uh, the kind of computational side of things. So, so we've also realized that a lot of the startups uh, that we work with uh, and also in the IoT and some physical space um, uh, may apply and use some AI for their end-to-end -end product and service. Uh, but uh, an issue is uh, often that uh, training your models um, or like, uh, you know, uh, you know, when you construct your algorithms uh, that you use, uh, it may be quite computationally ex uh, expensive and computation also costs money. <laughs> so so uh, that's another issue, obviously. And um, what we sort of like um, have um, devised is a, an accelerator program, which is called Machine Intelligent Garage that sort of helps then resource constrained startups access uh, uh, let's say expertise in AI and machine learning, but also compute resource. And what we offer here basically is uh, 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 basically then access to some um, um, DGX1 servers. These are like um, obviously servers used often for like training machine learning models, but we also, also have access to cloud credits and vouchers from a few of our partners, such as like um, uh, uh, Amazon, uh, Google um, uh, Cloud, and also I think um, um, Microsoft, if I'm right, if I'm not mistaken, sorry. And so so basically this is additional computer resource that could be made accessible for uh, for an experiment if, if this experiment basically requires such resource and it's obviously computational um, um, uh, constraint um, sorry, I might, must 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 retract. So it's not Microsoft, but it's Nvidia. So Google, Nvidia, and AWS are our partners. And um, the what we also offer is um, uh, because you know um, the complexity of building sort of AI-based uh, uh, products and services. Um, uh, you know, let's say concerns around bias in the data and and how they operate may also basically have certain ethical implications of your product design. And we provide also basically support for potentially um, ethics reviews uh, of your uh, kind of solution your, or your AI solution or AI's inspired solution. Um, and this is also made accessible for this program. And yeah, so what is it useful for? Obviously, 
uh, AI startups, scale ups who want to bring products to market in an ethical way. Um, obviously, keep in mind this is still an IoT CPS call, so um, uh, it, it, you must have basically this this element, I guess, as part of your solution, an IoT element as part of your solution. And yeah, um, obviously, advice on AI ethics as well. Okay, that's all from my end. All right, thank you, Alex, for your presentation. Uh, before we hear more about ST Microelectronics Technology, same as before, we would like to ask you a quick question about Alex's presentation. So, are you interested in digital, digital catapults technology? You should now see popping it up on your screen. All right, I will close this poll and I will give the floor to Marcelo. So Marcelo, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So my name is Marcelo Coppola. I'm working at the ST Microelectronics Center in France. And today I'm presenting you the STM32. So what is STM32 is really the brain of many IoT or industrial IoT application. So using STM32, you are able to run uh, your uh, uh, novel uh, IoT. You are able to build it as a novel IoT device. Uh, and then uh, the type of application you can run on side of the STM32 is quite broad. Today, you are able uh, to address a different kind of market spanning for smart industry, smart cities, smart homes, smart things. At the end, what we provide is really a very large portfolio of products able to mix and match what is your requirement. Just to give you an idea, today with the team 32 uh, we have uh, 15 uh, series of products. Uh, these uh, give us uh, at least 50 product lines. Uh, what is important is really uh, when you have in mind your application, your product, using uh, our solution, you are able to build very quickly uh, your product from uh, the idea you can really reach in a very quick manner your prototype and then you can move very quick to the final uh, product. Uh, what is also worthwhile to mention today, the maturity of STM32 is quite a solid uh, actor on the marketplace. We give uh, to all our uh, partners uh, 10 years of uh, uh, guarantee on the, on the support. So this means when you use something today for at least 10 years, you are able to find the component on the market. And then on top of them, we still have a lot of compatibility between different versions of our uh, STM32. In uh, DigiFed, what ST is uh, able to provide you is really all the elements uh, to build your application. So this means uh, to provide you the, the board uh, able to run your application also giving you the possibility to show, uh, to build your proof of concept in a very quick manner. On top of it, uh, in order to uh, execute, to develop your application, uh, you need the software developing tools. And today, ST provides you most of the software developing tools so able to build your application, so you are able to using our tool to configure to the bug program and monitor uh, uh, everything in your system. All those tools is free, so you don't need to pay any strange license. We provide everything for free. And then uh, also the ecosystem in terms of tooling or operating system is quite large, and you are able to access very easy to those elements. What is really uh, the really the selling point uh, giving us this uh, large success on the market is really 
today, depending uh, which kind of uh, macro you are going to use, you can decide if you need a very high performance uh, macro, or you can need uh, something very cost effective solution, or if you need uh, something uh, uh, targeting really, really low power, or you need uh, something uh, with a lot of activity. Depends on what you need, you can choose the appropriate uh, macro and then you can build your application on top of it. What is also important, ST is also providing, a, we have a lot of uh, partnership with the major cloud providing worldwide. So using our macro, you can have uh, some uh, facilities to connect your device to the cloud. Today we have several examples connecting our device with Amazon, Microsoft, Google, IBM, and so on. The list is really huge. The way how you are able to connect, uh, we pro uh, there are several ways. So we provide a lot of connectivity in our macro, so you can span from CD, from log, uh, you can use Wi-Fi, Ethernet, Six Fox or can use a real Bluetooth or other kind of uh, technology. So at the end, using our solution uh, or to apply to DigiFed, you are able to access it to a team 32 for free. You are able to develop your application. And then you are able really to realize uh, in a very simple way your, uh, uh, your final product. Uh, so if you can, uh, Change the slide. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Today, uh, as I mentioned before, we have a different product. As you can see here, the, those are really type of uh, uh, chip we have uh, produced. Uh, for, uh, for each of these uh, products, able to select, uh, we can provide the appropriate board in order to build your application. Uh, in general, uh, you select uh, your product depending really on the characteristic of your application. For instance, if you need really to be very low cost uh, and ultra low power, you can target something, what we call the synthetic to zero. But if you need something more sophisticated, for instance, if you need uh, a solution integrating uh, Bluetooth, you, will, you can target what we call the Synthesis to WB. So this allowed you really to target, to, to find the best uh, uh, chip uh, enabled or can, can allow you to build uh, your uh, application, or your product. What is also very important for all those devices, we provide an extra security level compared to other solutions on the market. Using our chip, we give you always uh, some security feature, uh, protecting your product uh, from uh, hacking, uh, from any kind of problem you can face when you put uh, when you add the connectivity. And for this reason, uh, we have launched uh, last year a few new family of product. One is the Dell 5, the other is the MP1. These two products introduce the hardware security. So this allowed you to split your application in, uh, uh, to define uh, what is secure or what is not secure. In this way, uh, you are able to connect to the cloud in a very secure manner. So all the issues you have in most of IoT products today, you are able to solve with this kind of device. At the same time, you are able to provide on the market a new product really differentiate with the, with the competition because you can give extra security, especially when you connect to the cloud. Then I would like also in DigiFed to push to a new product is what we call the Team 32 MP1, is the product on the right hand side on the top. This is a, a product we call a microprocessor MPU. The difference compared to the other product is uh, in this product we are able to run Linux in a manner. So this means 
you are able to run your Linux application together with your real-time application. In fact, this product support is a multi-core chip providing uh, a, a real microcontroller where you can run your real-time task. At the same time, you have some multi-core able to run your favorite Linux distribution. And then we have also an embedded GPU taking care of the graphics. So this is really a new product able to address really a lot of problems also to, to be using the different area on the market. So I think this product can really open the idea to new application. And what is really nice in this product is really a, uh, compared to other solution. The cost is very simple. Today we are able to offer you uh, the really some developing board where you can build very quick your application and then you can really show uh, how you are able to combine real time with the Linux. Uh, this product today use uh, in terms of to support real time we have M4, while to support Linux we use the A7 core. What is also important in this product to integrate hardware security. So this means using this core you are able to split again your application uh, on the secure part and not secure part. So this means you can decide if you need to store your key in some specific area. We have all the means for doing that. You don't need uh, to really to develop everything on this. We provide all the library in order to make uh, very simple the usage. And what do we do in this product? We do in all our products. So on top of the tooling, we provide a lot of software for free. You can use just to uh, for your application and then you can build really the full system in a very simple way. And this is a really uh, very good uh, things for a small company needed to be quick on the market to show very quick uh, uh, how the, their idea is very innovative. So if uh, you are really interested, please apply uh, to this offer. We are able really willing to work to support you in building your application and uh, we are really happy at the end if you are a successful company using our product. So that's it. All right. Thank you, Marcelo. So same as uh, Digital Catapult, you will see a question popping up on your screen right now. Are you interested in STM32? So I'll give you a few seconds to answer before I give the floor to Jure from the uh, University of Ljubljana. I uh, will give you a few more seconds and close this poll in three, two, one. All right. So, Jure. Yes, uh, thank you, Alice. Um, so, hello to all the viewers. This is Jure Triller from University of Ljubljana. Our Digital Innovation Hub at Faculty of Electrical Engineering has quite a few offers with potential to be integrated to CPS solutions. So I will try to make this very brief. Uh, so to get started, uh, the first technology is uh, so-called Percipio Big Data Analytics tool. And uh, this uh, slogan, find the unknowns and discover new insights, directly reflects the promise that with this tool, the customers will not overlook relevant information, but will get an edge to overcome the blind spot problem of nearly all companies. Uh, the focus on existing business model uh, quite often drives the executives to overlook the future opportunities, opportunities and risks. Uh, so the tool combines different sources of information and with uh, its algorithms to provide a holistic picture about both uh, scientific and technical developments as well as trends being of high relevance for current and future business development. Uh, the database contains more than 
250 million of technical and scientific articles and on top of that uh, more than 1 million of relevant social and uh, news items uh, per day. Uh, all these data are summarized into a few dashboards using context-based analytics algorithms where the context is selected by the customer. Uh, so moving on uh, to the next slide. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, so the next one uh, is the one that uh, I like the most because of this, it's a uh, prototyping and uh, potential and its simplicity. It's uh, named Sweater, it's electrical switch with Ethereum blockchain support. Uh, well, basically this uh, blockchain based end-to-end -end prototype sy system comprises of IoT devices and decentralized applications and user interfaces on the other end. It enables control of electric relay switch uh, via Ethereum blockchain transactions. And uh, the users can, in uh, one use case uh, that we promote most often, is the, the one that where users can reserve electric charging slot and pay for consu consumed um, time and energy uh, via Ethereum blockchain network. It's uh, just a practical demonstration of block te blockchain technologies and IoT devices. And uh, this prototype, con prototype consists of smart contracts um, where all the logic uh, is executed and also the user and uh, administration web applications that uh, run uh, on proprietary uh, servers but can also be run uh, like standalone on the Ethereum network. Um, this solution enables several use case approaches, uh, models uh, with customer, customizable add-on and off-chain elements. And uh, as I said, it's excellent uh, prototyping uh, tool uh, for distinct IoT and blockchain solutions and can be easily extended to other use cases like charging electrical vehicles, arbitrary device, uh, control of IoT devices and uh, all sorts of device to device transactions and interactions so moving on to the next slide um, this will be brief uh, it's a co-creating co-creation methodology to design effective digital solution with stakeholders it's not uh, a technical solution per se but it's a service that is uh, provided through some um, web tools uh, that we promote and it enables creating innovative products services and policies and also business models that correspond with relevant stakeholders needs expectations and motivations and can be used in both private and uh, entrepreneurial efforts to connect the business value to end users and also in public com communal uh, endeavors of creating sensible solutions for all the citizens a service uh, provided with this uh, so-called Seroy Plus methodology combines soci socio-economic and environmental return on investment uh, with open innovation. Okay, and the next slide is Cloud DevOps Design and Consultation. Well, it's a consulting and in, in implementation service that can be provided in distinct, distinct business and software development contexts and based on specific organizations' needs, capacities, and nevertheless their digital strategy, we support the implementation of cloud data storage processing and automation services to, for open public and closed proprietary cloud systems. So the next one, uh -huh. so this is the IoT prototyping uh, platform and also the consulting that goes with it. And uh, this uh, Colibri IoT is an open IoT sensor platform uh, developed by teachers for students to learn basic IoT principles on real life application. It's based on the Arduino pl platform and supports slower way and connectivity out of the box and enables a broad range of features using various of the shells extension boards. Colibri IoT can be used to develop smart city, smart ag agriculture, smart industry and other application prototypes in a fast and effective manner. Uh, moving on, uh, Armon, um, it's IoT sensing automation system. This is um, quite a large product uh, platform, actually. Uh, I will try to sum it up in a few sentences. It's a uh, sensing automation system for industrial and outdoor in environments, uh, supporting IoT devices and sensor deployments. It features a distributed uh, architecture and comprises a 
uh, cloud-based management systems for remote gateways and sensor control, and uh, an IoT gateway family with various communication models like Wi-Fi, all the Gs, including 5G, uh, LoRaWAN, uh, and so on. Um, a broad range of sensors, measurements, collectors, aggregators, and uh, other facilitators, and also advanced analytics with visualization, system notifications, and alerting. Um, moving on to PPDR drone, it's a 5G training and experimentation facility. Well, uh, essentially, it's a compact uh, 5G ready mobile radio core and cloud node to be deployed in the field as a portable solution for 5G communication services. It's one of a kind facility for hands on development, testing, and verifications, verification of uh, 5G and also of 4G network architectures and services uh, with specialized features for public safety and critical infrastructures. It delivers the critical communication grade environment with where first responders, critical infrastructure owners, and their solution providers can run development testing and evaluation of novel generic PPDR radio and core networks and cloud infrastructures, or mission critical video and data apps and services. Uh, Next slide. Uh, it's uh, QMON, it's quality monitoring, monitoring sensor. It um, is derived from the same family as the previous um, solution, but this one uh, product suite is testing, is a testing solution for 4G and 5G quality assurance testing, benchmarking and KPI validation of capacities of end-to-end -end quality monitoring and uh, quality of service assurance for um, mobile fixed cloud infrastructures and services. As the 5G environment introduces new concepts of how next generation communication environments will be built and run in the future, this is uh, quite an interesting solution to have the, the um, proprietary uh, mobile portable um, exclusive 5G node and uh, test and exploit full capacity of the 5G. Um, moving on. So we are at intervention monitoring system. I think this is the last slide. Um, the IMON, like the name says, intervention, thing, intervention monitoring system is a product suite for real-time intervention monitoring and critical infrastructure protection. It's designed for use by first responders and public safety agencies and provides a common operational picture in real time and uh, a lot of IoT supported intervention management tools with on-site sensing and tracking capabilities. And uh, it, it has been uh, piloted and validated in real world environment in cooperation with uh, actual uh, firefighting squads, uh, rescue uh, services, uh, and so on, uh, on regional and local command levels, as well as the national headquarters um, center. So uh, from our side, uh, this is it. And uh, for further questions, uh, we may hear each other later. Thank you. Well, thank you, Yuri, uh, for your presentation. Before we start with Ikernan's, uh, with Jesus from Ikernan, same as before, now you have another question popping up on your screen. So are you interested in the technologies that has been presented by Yuri from Ljubljana? Uh, if the one is not the, the one you're interested in is not uh, as says uh, properly mentioned. Please select other, and you will be in touch with Yuri in the future. All right. So I'll give you a few more seconds and give the floor to Jesus. Hello. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Do you hear me? Yeah. All right. So, yeah. so, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and have the opportunity to explain you some of our technologies uh, from Ikerlan. Um, let's get uh, started with a brief introduction of Ikerlan, which is a 40 years old private research technological center with a pragmatic research service and with a very close collaboration with industry. So uh, more precisely today, I'm going to run through 
four technological offers where we keep a strong collaboration with several sectors such as transportation, manufacturing, or energy distribution. So first, um, I'm going to show you a slide for each technology, and then I will end up, end up my presentation with some examples of our developments. So uh, I will start with information and communication technologies, where we have two main uh, developments. The first one is uh, IoT and digital platforms with uh, a set of connectivity uh, capabilities uh, from short range to long range, and also uh, several uh, protocols and interoperability strategies um, for industrial IoT. Uh, and we also have uh, indoors and outdoors location capabilities and developments, and also what we call intelligence of things, where we uh, implement inside of this inter uh, intelligence of things uh, capabilities for edge computing. Apart from this, we have uh, uh, data analytics and artificial intelligence, where we have a small, a smart uh, digital platforms, highly scalable. We are uh, developing our platforms, uh, and they have been scaled uh, worldwide. Uh, public and private hybrid cloud cost, uh, architectures. We have also artificial intelligence and data analysis of all these uh, uh, sectors and uh, especially for predictive maintenance and also to create data lakes for data analytics. Uh, we interpret and we, we have data interpretability and uh, artificial intelligence algorithms for these platforms. And we also have, uh, we have capabilities in order to develop chatbots or what we can call also natural interaction with, with data. And within this last, uh, within this uh, topic, we have development of platforms based on microservices and serverless. So this is our offer in information and communication technologies. And let's move on to the next, next slide, which I think I have done already, which is dependable embedded systems. In this particular topic, we have uh, our capability is uh, in development of dependable systems by experts on safe software uh, engineering and real-time electronics. As in the previous one, one of our main characteristics is uh, robots, robustness and reliability. And in this case also, we take this to the top or to the maximum in order to provide embedded systems developed certified for up to SEAL 4. We also have software development and virtualization for real-time control. It's really important for us, uh, all the hardware, and we have developed tools and hardware and software in order to control uh, real-time applications. Uh, we have automatic testing and validation, artificial vision for embedded safety, and also in order to describe our key performances, we have more than 20 years of experience on electronics and safe embedded systems. We have a safety certified methodology under tube standards. We have uniqueness in terms of, uh, for example, we have more than 10 functional safety engineers. We have one functional safety expert, which is a uh, unique uh, in Spain. So uh, we are referential on development of advanced safe functionality executed in complex chips, in system on chips, multi-core, and GPUs. Our the, uh, the maturity level of the technology, the maturity level, level is, is pretty high. It's, although we have the different uh, technologies at different levels, but pretty much we can say that we are uh, employing this in, in the seven number. And we have applications from development software for control units on transport, like traction or elevation in, in uh, elevators. And also we have development of an application of, of up to SEAL 4 for certified applications in railway signaling and virtualization of application and plants like in, in elevators. So let's move now to the following one. Uh, this is the previous one. Yeah, so this is um, hardware and communication systems where we have two main lines, uh, the hardware systems and the communication systems. In terms of hardware, we have, we move, in this slide, what I wanted to, to highlight is 
those applications that are close to the physical uh, state, from, uh, are close to the sensors and the processing of the signals close to the application itself. Uh, and in this case, we have uh, hardware developments in sensors, in, in low com uh, consumption electronics, signal conditioning. So we are de we develop applications where those sensors uh, and nodes and IoTs require low consumption, for example. We also develop software that, uh, system software, uh, operating systems, drivers, FPGA and program logic. Uh, we are also working on this uh, and integration. This is a important part also in, in our expertise uh, in terms of developing and, and integrating the application in real case scenarios uh, and, and under extreme conditions and harsh environments. We uh, also have non-functional developments like standard compliance, uh, it's also an important part for us, and test and troubleshooting like EMC, uh, EMC or electrical security and environmental. And in terms of communications, we have industrial connectivity, wireless and wired. We have real-time communication, but a hard real-time communication. Uh, this is very important for certain applications where we need a very strict time control of uh, certain applications, and we are uh, de developing our own protocols, and we also use external protocols to run that up industrial applications. We work on antennas in terms of design, simulation, and characterization, and the verification and validation of wireless communication systems. So let's move to industrial cybersecurity. This is uh, the, the last of our main technologies that I'm going to talk today. Uh, and this is industrial cybersecurity is an uh, important aspect of all systems take into account the protection of embedded electronic systems and digital platforms from the sensor to the cloud. Uh, as I uh, mentioned before, basically our principle is to secure product development, uh, to uh, create a evaluation of service in terms of service security, to provide a, 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 sa a safe and cyber secure uh, industrial communication and, and cyber secure cloud and user interfaces, which is also a an important uh, vector to for, for for breaching. The key performances is a security, security life cycle and certification. We also work on trust technologies based on distributed ledger technologies, such as uh, blockchain. We are having uh, different projects on, on this matter in the, with industry at this moment. Uh, in terms of our uniqueness, uh, we can say that, for example, 35 methodologies and addressing compliance with TADO cyber security standards. We are very aware of how important it is not only to be cyber secure, but to be able to demonstrate that we are cyber secure and our customers require not only to have cyber secure pro products, but also the capability of showing that these products are safe and secure and cyber secure. So, this is also why we are very. Um, concern of, uh, of of certification certification and standard in terms of maturity we we have uh, certain uh, technologies more mature than others but in general we have a 10 of a seven and applications go from cyber secure embedded systems evaluation and development end to end industrial iot cyber secure communications or cyber secure digital platforms for cps monitoring so as you can see here, so we move from the sensor to, to the cloud. So I need to move now to the following one. Okay. So I, I, I moved twice. So Alice, could you help me out? Yeah, thank you. Um, this is an example. Uh, we have, we developed uh, different platforms, digital platforms, and in this case, for example, I'm going to show you uh, an artificial intelligence power uh, platform where we have the capability to provide tools and, and develop uh, artificial intelligence uh, solutions, also based on edge computing, uh, fog edge computing, the dynamic architectures where uh, the computing can go from the cloud to the to the edge. Uh, depending on the scenario, depending on the situation in real time, 
Um, it is also powered by artificial intelligence and it's built under microservices oriented to edge devices. Um, our unique uh, features could be said that is artificial intelligence from talk to the cloud, microservices based structure. So this uh, makes a difference in terms to uh, develop new devices on, on new new platforms, and also it's based on and it, it, run, it reach uh, edge computing. So uh, it's very important for us to to have all this power computing that we mentioned before from the communication from the hardware. Uh, and to have at the edge and to reduce uh, delays and to reduce uh, any problem that you might have with communication and in order and avoid uh, lags or uh, safety issues. So um, the maturity might be five and we have a heterogeneous cloud architecture with smart data legs, uh, microservices, so applications, uh, we have industry 4.0, uh, smart factories, smart cities, smart living. But I like to also make an, uh, make, make one of our main uh, focus or sector is industry so and smart factories also. So it's also something that we uh, I like to highlight. Uh, this is another example, it's an autonomous wireless sensor node, as I said before, with capabilities of computing in, in, inside, uh, with uh, low power, uh, with zero power actually, sensor harvest at the same time, high processing capabilities, no need of radiator and can be flexible, uh, robust and synchronized communications. Uh, we have several traditions for sensing, like uh, temperature, accelerators, wireless data, uh, indoor photovoltaic of the cell, so the, the prototype is working with RF. Um, we have a further monitorization in progress, additional sensing and optimization. And the key performances is uh, our lo local data processing, our robust wireless communication based on TDMA, and up to uh, plus uh, minus 16 microseconds of accuracy. So one of our possible applications could be smart logistics, smart factory, impact, or temperature measurements. And also, it's very crucial to, to mention that it's a robust uh, device, it's a harsh environment ready, and that's why industrial environments or indoor sensing could be very suitable. So last slide is uh, safe and real-time software upon commercial hardware. We have the capability to to embed real-time and non-real-time software on safety certified context. Uh, the principle is to select a multi-core commercial hardware and, and integrate or embedded hypervisors. Uh, we have uh, software development based on modeling and also safety concepts based on industrial machine standards like ISO uh, 13489. Our uniqueness value can be an affordable cutting edge hardware, simplification of complex software development, and safety uh, safety uh, capabilities. In terms of maturity, we will say it's a six. Uh, it is integrated in a product already, but, uh, and our key performance is uh, a safety up to uh, kind of level uh, CIL2, and uh, our applications go from or can go from uh, wind turbine control, operation monitoring, or local recording or of key variables. So from our side, uh, from Likerland, this is it. Uh, as I said before, uh, it's a very oriented to robust, reliable uh, behavior. So that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Jesus. So very quickly, before we move to the last presentation of today, uh, this is the question regarding uh, Ikerland. So you have very few seconds to answer before Andrew takes the floor. All right, I will close in three, two, one. Andres, the floor is yours. 
Thank you very much, Alice. Uh, my name is Andras Pope. Uh, I am. Uh, uh, I work at the Budapest University of Technology and Economics, uh, at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Informatics, Department of Electron Devices. So, uh, at our university, we are the so-called macroelectronics guys. Actually, uh, our department has been acting as a digital innovation hub uh, for quite a while, starting with the Euro CPS project. Uh, with a couple of partners also participating here in DigiFed. Uh, what uh, we are offering is a special expertise we gained uh, in the last couple of years uh, within uh, a few uh, European Age 2020 projects and OTAS facilities. Uh, the first offer uh, uh, concentrates on solid state lighting on LEDs. Uh, it's about uh, the smartification of uh, hopefully already connected lighting solutions. Uh, the idea is, especially for street lights, that by a proper thermal oriented design, you can consider the temperature dependent efficiency change of the LEDs. And if you do uh, this design properly, uh, you would be able to save uh, uh, energy uh, or power uh, by considering, so not to make the worst case design of your lighting solution where you have to design for the hottest possible environment uh, with the total uh, light output, but you can uh, consider the efficiency, temperature dependent efficiency changes of LEDs through adopting the driving current of, uh, of, the, of the LEDs within your luminaire. And uh, in the bottom, you see a, a, a small diagram showing uh, how the total light output of a given luminaire would depend on the actual uh, ambient temperature. This uh, 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 diagram refers to uh, the average climate in Hungary, somewhere in the middle of Hungary. Uh, so that's the, the orange set of curves. Whereas if you implement uh, what we are proposing, uh, the so-called uh, constant light output or isoflux uh, uh, control of the forward current, uh, you will have a constant light output, that's the purpose. And through that, uh, uh, according to, uh, uh, to the design constraints and the, the local climate, uh, you can achieve roughly 8% uh, uh, power saving. What is the technology behind? The technology behind is uh, the multi-domain characterization of the LED packages used in a lighting solution, completed uh, with a so-called compact modeling of uh, uh, the uh, LED modules and the complete luminaires and performing uh, virtual prototyping through these uh, uh, multi-domain models using something that we call the digital twin of the luminaire. Once uh, uh, you uh, are satisfied uh, uh, with your prototype, you, you, you can, with this uh, 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 digital twin of the luminaire, you can do various things. You may perform optimization on, on the one hand, you can assess different design scenarios, uh, but on the other hand, you can also identify the required uh, temperature current relationship, which is needed to uh, achieve the constant light output. Uh, we provide test facilities uh, uh, for, for this purpose. So uh, at least if we move forward, uh, I, I'd like to give uh, some insight into the methodology and the techniques we have. So please move forward. Yes. So uh, on, on the one hand, we have the most comprehensive and up-to-date LED package testing uh, solution available nowadays on the market. Uh, this is the means with which we can offer LED, characterize, LED package characterization services. At the end of the day, we can provide you with the parameters of uh, a multi-domain LED package model. 
actually these models there are two uh, such models already available in the public domain uh, available as set of equations or as uh, at these spice models for such models we provide derived parameters from the actual physical measurement of the leds so that's what we call the digital twin of uh, an led package for a complete product design digitalized uh, uh, product design process for uh, led based luminaires uh, what else is needed uh, the concept of your luminaire is needed perhaps in form uh, in the form of an mcat design based on which uh, we can help you set up uh, the right compact thermal model of the luminaire this combined with the led packages uh, multi-domain uh, digital twins or simulation models uh, results in a luminaire level multi-domain uh, model and running through a series of uh, simulations for example with lt spice we can identify the forward current ambient temperature function that would assure the right uh, constant light put output property for your luminaire uh, we have uh, successfully carried out an industrial uh, experiment with a local hungarian uh, small luminaire manufacturing company here you see the test results in the diagram below. Uh, so uh, the luminaire was put uh, into the climate chamber of a uh, test facility. Uh, this chamber was equipped with uh, the proper uh, light output measurement devices, and we measured the light output as function of the ambient temperature. And as you see, within a few percent, uh, the light output remained constant. Uh, so what we offer is on, on the one hand, uh, the test facilities. On the other hand, the modeling uh, capabilities uh, uh, and, the cons uh, and consultation. Uh, so we can help you uh, uh, implement uh, this kind of uh, constant light output approach for your luminaires. Your luminaires could be street lighting, tunnel lighting, automotive lighting luminaires. Uh, in certain cases for indoor applications, uh, this also would be uh, appropriate. I mentioned the test facilities, so let's move forward to, uh, to our second offer. We have, we have something that we call the versatile reliability tester or testing facility. The core of this uh, uh, offer is uh, mentor graphics is uh, thermal transient measurement technology through the Trista equipment that we have. And the idea is that for most of the reliability tests, fire cycling or temperature cycling is a must. So uh, the reliability testing protocols include such tests. Uh, you, uh, here I provide a link, uh, which is a typical description of reliability test protocols mentioning these uh, cycling tests and the idea which came from uh, our team uh, uh, a couple of years ago also within a european project was that if you do uh, power or temperature cycling whatever you do uh, you switch on and off your devices that's how thermal transient testing uh, operates where you switch off uh, a semiconductor device you can you, you switch off the power uh, on a semiconductor device, you can measure the corresponding junction temperature transient. And from this junction temperature transient, you can extract thermal information, lots of thermal information. Uh, what we call structure function uh, became a de facto industry standard in electronic schooling and power, power electronics reliability studies. Uh, this is kind of a map of the heat flow paths and the change uh, of uh, the structure functions indicates structural degradation of your device. Uh, based on these, you can set up failure criteria. So you can say that uh, after uh, X cy power cycles, your diet edge failed or other thermal interface material degraded to an unacceptable level. So what we offer is uh, this measurement technique with uh, different uh, additional hardware to provide the actual uh, test environment. 
So this way you can measure uh, different bar modules, RF modules, uh, uh, LEDs, uh, 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 different uh, field effect transistors, etc. Uh, this is the very same test facility that we used uh, in the previous example to identify the temperature dependent uh, uh, light output of a luminaire. So here you see a climate chamber, which is part of uh, the test setup to provide uh, temperature cycling. Power cycling itself is providing, uh, provided through the uh, test equipment. There is already an industrial uh, version uh, of uh, this methodology uh, developed by Biomental Graphics uh, for the uh, IGBT uh, industry up to power levels of multiple kilowatts. Uh, we do not have uh, at uh, our university lab uh, such an equipment because it's too big for our lab, but uh, we can, if you are interested in this technology, we can also uh, uh, give you some insight and the details of this technology and uh, advise you what uh, actual solution you need. There is a white paper on a, sp a specific application example. It's a conference paper. So if you have free access to IEEE Explode database, you can download that paper or uh, I can also uh, send this paper to you on request. Uh, how uh, aging, was, uh, aging of, of MOSFETs was monitored uh, with, uh, with this technology. That is what we have reported in this paper. So altogether, what we offer is a mix of uh, modeling uh, uh, methodologies and industry 4.0 like uh, workflow for LED-based products with uh, uh, required uh, modeling. And uh, we also offer the test facilities uh, on the one hand set up your uh, models on the other hand to assess the final performance of your products. Uh, this uh, uh, reliability testing uh, solution based on power cycling and trend, uh, thermal transient measurements uh, does is applicable to different uh, RF uh, modules, sensors, PSUs, drivers, LEDs, FETs, uh, uh, as I've shown for LED luminaire assessment, and uh, any uh, solution that is being developed in Digit DigiFed and uh, the rela uh, reliability is, is, is an issue, uh, we can assess, uh, we can help you assess uh, how uh, reliable a product would be in, under harsh conditions, especially from a thermocycling point of view. Uh, as I see uh, from the previous offers, uh, 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 for example, uh, from uh, Jesus' uh, presentation, uh, multiple uh, offers from DigiFed combined could really help you uh, uh, to, to set up your right uh, smart and reliable uh, solution. Thank you very much. So that's all from, from uh, BME, from Budapest University of Technology and Economics. Thank you, Andres. Thank you very much for your presentation. So last question, are you interested in the technologies that has been presented to you? You should see it on your screen right now. I'll give a few more seconds before I close the poll. Three, two, one. Thank you very much for all these answers. So now quickly before we jump to our Q and A session, uh, I would like to introduce you to the United Against COVID-19 Action that we support here at Lumofo, but also with the help of DigiFed. So United Against COVID-19 Action is a voluntary action that aims to support the fight against this international crisis we are seeing right now. Um, the goal of this action is to give visibility to solutions that could help health professionals and citizens in the fight against COVID-19. To do that, there is a call for solution that is open now with no limitation. All solutions coming from any type of organization will be assessed by the European Network of Health Authorities. So how to help in this action? It's quite easy. There are two ways to help. 
first you could showcase your solution by applying to the call I just mentioned, or you could share your, the world to, on this action to your network. And once it's done, uh, come back to us and become an official partner of the action. So you can see the link on the presentation uh, to the two social media posts uh, and to the website page. So don't hesitate to check it and see if you would have a, play to, uh, a role to play in this. It applies to a lot of application sectors like a hand washing solution, robotic solution for disinfection, community to keep the social link, oxygenation, mass machine learning, and uh, AI, health monitoring, home health care, medication management, diagnosis, uh, all solutions will be considered. So thank you very much for your attention. We will have the QA session now. Uh, I think. Alex had to leave, but uh, there, were a there was a, a, a first uh, question for him that was, uh, are you testing it? Uh, just a second now. So the first question for Alex, are you testing energy consumption for electronic device or only those involved in communication technology. Uh, so unfortunately, as I said, he had to leave, but uh, he sent me a few messages. Uh, so he says that cost for access to uh, uh, hardware software of the lab is part of the experiment support if successful. Uh, well, uh, all, all questions for Alex uh, will be sent to him and he will come back to you via email. I think it, it will be easier. There's another question for Jesus. Uh, do you support uh, XMPP in your testing environment? Hello, hi. Could you repeat the, the question, please? Yeah. Do you support X, XMPP in your testing environment? Yes, we do. Okay, well, that's the answer. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jesus. Uh, there's another question. According to Guide for Applicants, funding will cover the development costs related to the hardware software integration for system integration project. Uh, therefore, hardware design and development are not eligible costs. Is that true? Can you be more specific about eligible costs besides from personal costs, please? Um, I'm afraid that would be something I would check with my uh, coordination team and I will come back to you via email as well. Uh, same for the second question, Alexis, that you sent. Uh, as, as I said, I will check them with the, the coordination team and, and come back to you. All right. Well, uh, I think that's it for the question. Do you have more? For the proposal drafting, we need to be present and we need to present a real test bed. Uh, is that is that a, a question for Alex maybe? I don't know. So again, for this question, I'll come back to you, Claudio. Can we partner with Ikerland to develop for us an embedded system? Then we are going to integrate to our platform. Is that eligible experiment? If not, can how can we make use of Ikerland's dependable embedded system service? Jesus? Hello, hi. Uh, I'm afraid that I cannot hear you very well. The sound is not uh, very good. Could you repeat the question, please? Can we partner or, with Ikeland? Or writing down. Or okay. maybe writing down if it's possible. Okay, if the sound is not good, uh, maybe what we can do is integrate the question to the frequently asked question on the website so that you can see the, the answer. It might be easier. We will come back to you um, with all the answers. Uh, be, all right, because I am not able to know what you are saying very well. Okay. 
Okay, well, uh, for all the questions that have not have been answered, we will come back to you uh, by, with a, a written down explanation. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, have a very nice day and we'll come back to you. All right, thank you. Bye.